You might think falling into a black hole is as easy as falling into a giant pit, but boy, is it a whole different ballgame. To actually fall into a black hole, you would need some incredible luck and a dash of wizardry. Moreover, if you were watching something fall into a black hole, you wouldn't even see it. Why? Well, let's try to understand the magic of physics. Falling into a black hole is really, really tricky. First of all, to even have a chance of doing this, you would need to aim perfectly and start your journey from very far away. It's like trying to hit a tiny target from a long distance. That's because black holes exist within galaxies, which are filled with other objects like stars, planets, and gas clouds. These objects have their own gravitational forces that can influence the path you need to take. It's like you have to carefully navigate through the room, avoiding bumping into others or getting pulled off course by their movements. In a similar way, when falling into a black hole, you need to navigate through the influences of other celestial objects. As you get closer, things get even more complicated. Making even the tiniest change in direction would require a tremendous amount of energy that you wouldn't be able to generate. It's like trying to steer a spaceship with no fuel left. This is because the black hole's gravitational pull is immensely strong. Once you pass the point called the event horizon, there is no coming back. You wouldn't be able to control anything. Now, even if you somehow manage to get on the right path and avoid all the obstacles, there's still a dangerous situation waiting for you. The intense heat and energy around the black hole, called plasma, would fry you as you get closer. So, you would need some impossibly strong protection to get even close to it. But not only is it nearly impossible to fall into a black hole, it's also impossible to see someone falling in it. Why? Let's find out. Imagine you're standing far away from a black hole, watching something getting closer and closer to the event horizon. As this thing, let's say it's a spaceship, falls into the black hole, two very strange things start happening. First, the color of the spaceship will change. You see, the gravity near a black hole is incredibly strong, much stronger than anything we experience here on Earth. This intense gravity affects everything around it, including light. Now, light has this fascinating property where it carries energy. But when light gets close to a black hole, the powerful gravitational pull starts sapping away its energy, kind of like stealing it, making light weaker. And you know how when you look at a beautiful sunset, the sun appears to be this warm reddish orange color? Well, that's because when sunlight travels through our atmosphere, it scatters and loses some of its higher energy bluish colors, leaving behind the redder ones. So when light loses energy, it tends to shift towards the red end of the color spectrum. The same thing happens near a black hole. The light from the spaceship loses energy due to the black hole's strong gravity. So the spaceship, which initially had its own color, starts looking redder and redder as it gets closer to the black hole. It's as if the black hole is casting its magical spell, changing the color of the spaceship itself. The second weird thing is related to time. According to a theory of general relativity, gravity can mess around with time itself. And it works in a very strange way, because none of you, not you, not people on board a spaceship, will feel this change. For you, an observer in this scenario, time is flowing just like it always does. You're just sitting there, sipping your space lemonade and watching the spaceship's journey. For people on a spaceship, things are the same. Their watch ticks away at a regular pace, and they go about their day as usual. But objectively, for you, it would be like watching a spaceship fall in slow motion. It will seem to you that it's been falling into a black hole for weeks or even years. You might turn 80 and the spaceship is still out there. Crazy, right? Now, if time slows down for the spaceship, it means the light it emits also slows down. So imagine someone on that spaceship flicking a flashlight on and off. But because time is moving so slowly, the light coming from the flashlight also moves in slow motion. It takes ages for each burst of light to reach your eyes. You'll be watching a spaceship as if you're watching a video in super slow motion. 
And when light takes longer to reach your eyes, it becomes weaker and dimmer, just like a fading star. So, as the spaceship gets closer and closer to the black hole's event horizon, not only does it start looking redder, but it also appears dimmer. So, it becomes harder and harder to see the spaceship as it gets closer to the black hole. It slowly fades away, like a disappearing act on the grandest stage of the universe. Pretty mind-boggling, isn't it? But that's all about you, the observer. And how are people on board doing? What do you actually experience when you fall into a black hole? As you get closer to the black hole, something really weird starts happening. The gravity near the black hole is so powerful that it stretches and warps everything around it. So the difference in gravitational pull between your head and feet becomes significant. This difference creates a tidal force, which stretches your body like a long, thin shape. It's a process that's scientifically called spaghettification. Essentially, you would be stretched into a human noodle. Being turned into spaghetti might sound fun for a pasta lover, but it's definitely not so great for an astronaut. Meanwhile, colors around you begin to warp and distort, creating a dazzling light show. It's like riding a roller coaster through a rainbow tunnel twists and turns, flashes and sparks. It's an exhilarating, mind-bending experience. And then, what happens to you depends on the type of black hole. First, we have classical black holes. These are black holes that exist forever. If you fall into this black hole, it would take an incredibly long time to reach the center. The center would keep getting closer and closer, but you would need an almost infinite amount of time to reach it so it would feel like your journey would never end. And then we have evaporating black holes. These black holes can evaporate over time due to a process called Hawking radiation. It's just like the ice cubes melting away. These black holes have a limited lifespan, and it's basically impossible to fall into one of them. As you approach the evaporating black hole, you find yourself hovering near its edge, the event horizon. It's like being stuck at the entrance of a super cool amusement park. But guess what? This amusement park is shrinking. The black hole is evaporating, and as it does, the event horizon gets smaller and smaller. So you stay right at the edge, tracking its every move, but you will forever stay in this event horizon without ever crossing it. But remember, once you pass the point of no return, there's no way back. You're on a one-way ticket to the mysterious heart of the black hole, the Singularity. At the Singularity, everything goes bonkers. Our current understanding of physics goes haywire, so it's a bit like entering a magic show. What happens once you reach the Singularity? Is there anything on the other side of a black hole? We have no idea. It's a big mystery for us, but maybe we'll figure this out someday. So, my friend, it's best to admire black holes from a safe distance and let your imagination soar with the incredible wonders they hold. Just remember to keep your pasta on your plate and not near these cosmic spaghetti makers. So, you're standing on a diving board in the middle of an open space. You look down, but that's not a pool. It's a giant black hole. Well, what the heck. You start swinging and then you jump. The gravity of the black hole grabs you and you pick up speed. Just a little more, and you'll enter the dark abyss. But you're not afraid. You're sure you can survive the fall into the black hole. Besides, you have a clear goal – to travel through time. But first, let's figure out how it works and why time stops near a black hmm. hole. This is the space-time grid. It's what our entire universe is made of. And just like a regular grid, it sags if you put something heavy on it. <laughs> like me. For example, let's put the planet Earth here. You see a little funnel that is formed around the Earth. And if you put a small ball next to the planet, it'll roll into the funnel. That's how gravity works. The heavier the object, the more it bends space-time. By comparison, here's the Sun. It's almost 333,000 times heavier than the Earth. So it makes a really big funnel. So big that all the planets in our solar system move around that star inside that funnel. So now, let's put a black hole on a space-time grid. Its centers are infinitely heavy, so they create a limitless deep well. And anything caught in the black hole's gravitational field can never leave it, not even moving at the speed of light. 
Okay, their gravity is infinitely strong, but why do they slow down time? It's all about the speed of light. According to physics law, the speed of light must be the same at every point in our universe, even in a black hole. So, for our experiment, we take this ball, a photon of light that can travel 671 million miles per hour. You could get from Earth to the Sun at that speed in 8 minutes. That's how long it takes light to travel from our star to our eyes. So, when you're looking at the Sun, you're looking back in time 8 minutes ago. By the way, don't look at it directly. Now, the critical thing to remember here is that velocity consists of two physical quantities. Space, miles, and time, hours. We'll use that later. Now, let's look at the black hole in our space-time grid. In three-dimensional space, it appears like this. But if we assume that space is two-dimensional, our grid looks like this when viewed from above. Just a lot of squares. And this is the black hole right in the middle. If you look at the grid from the side, you'll see a straight line. And the black hole here looks like a pit, or like an endless well. Now, let's follow our photon of light in three-dimensional space. Here, it's moving toward the black hole, and then it falls into the well of the black hole. And it continues its motion at a constant speed. Now, the side view. Again, the photon moves from left to right, and then falls. Its velocity doesn't change. The problems begin if you look at the experiment from above. When the photon of light moves in the distance of the black hole, its speed is stable. But then it goes down into the well. First, it slows down, and then it just stands still. But it's moving downwards. The photon moves in an arc down the well in the lower dimension without changing its speed. But in the higher dimension, it traveled a minimal distance at the same speed. Usually, this would mean that the photon was moving at a low speed in the second case. But not in the case of the speed of light. Remember, it must be the same at every point in the universe. The number 671 million miles per hour shouldn't change. So, we change the very parameters of that number. Time. Time itself must slow down so much that this slight movement of the photon when you look at it from above was at the same speed. 671 million miles per hour. But if you go down and look at this well much lower, you see that its walls are almost vertical. So, a photon of light would be moving in a vertical trajectory. That means that if you look at it from above, the photon will just be standing still. Again, its velocity can't change, so time will vary. At that point, it should just stop. This is what happens near a black hole. Now, if you look at a black hole, you can see this effect in action. It swallows up the light around it. But as for an observer, it seems to you that the light stays in orbit around the black disk. In fact, at that moment, the photons are still moving at the speed of light inside the black hole. It's because time has slowed down there so much that you feel like the light has stopped there. This disk is called the event horizon, the point of no return, the last stop before you go into the black abyss. And at the very center of the black hole is the singularity. This point of space is so dense that if you try to describe it with any numbers or physical quantities, they would all tend toward infinity. Simply put, all the laws of physics we know just stop working here. So scientists can't say exactly what awaits you in the singularity. Before you make that jump into the black hole, let's drop a space probe there with a blue light that flashes once per second. And let's attach giant clocks to it. You see the probe falling into the black hole, gaining speed. But then it starts to slow down. Moreover, the probe flattens out and seems to spread out around the black hole. And then, you notice that the blue beacon on the probe has changed its light. It now flashes as red. It's because the light is a wave. Blue is a truly short wave with a high frequency. But the black hole's gravity acts on this wave, stretching it out. The light waves get lengthened and become broader and less frequent. The new wavelength and frequency match with the red color. It's called redshift. Also, the probe blinks now not once a second in short beeps, but lights up and goes out for a long time. It's because of the time warp. If you, as an observer, look at the clock on the probe, the second hand there barely moves. However, the clock on your hand works as usual. But if you could be in a black hole, time would seem normal to you. And the arrow on the clock would move as it did before. 
but the hands on the clock outside the black hole would move like crazy to you. That's because time goes much faster outside the black hole. Oops, your probe just got ripped apart. That's because of the substantial difference in gravity that acts on the probe. The black hole's gravitational force increases with every foot of approach. That is, if you were to extend your hand toward the black hole hard, the gravity on your fingers would be much stronger than on your shoulder. This force would cause your fingers to lengthen, simply like spaghetti. That's why many people think it's impossible to survive falling into a black hole. But scientists think you could survive without a problem. Hey, maybe they should jump first just to make sure. (laughs) The thing is, you have to pick a black hole as big as possible, like the ones at the centers of galaxies, for example. That bright spot at the center of the Milky Way also has a black hole. It's about 1 million times heavier than the Sun. And this is the Messier 87 galaxy, one of the most massive galaxies among our neighbors. In 2019, humanity got its first-ever photo of the black hole at the center of this galaxy. It's about 6.5 billion times heavier than our Sun. So it's the perfect place to make your jump into a black hole finally. Let's go! At first, you feel a strong acceleration as the incredible force of gravity grabs you. But in the case of a supermassive black hole like this, the gravity doesn't change as dramatically. That's because of its size. Right now, the gravitational force on your legs is about equal to the gravitational force on your head. So you don't turn into spaghetti, and you feel comfortable. You see that the light from the stars and all the space around you has begun to shrink at a certain point. It means that you have already passed the event horizon and are now moving toward the black hole's heart. As a result, the light of the universe becomes a small dot for you and then disappears altogether. If we look at our space-time grid, you're already falling into a well. Time is completely stopped for you. However, the rest of the world continues to move steadily through time. If you could now look at the Earth from a black hole, you would see a time-lapse, an accelerated video of how the months and years go by on our planet. If you had a jetpack that had an incredible engine to pull you out of the black hole, then you can make a jump forward in time. In one second, centuries on Earth could pass in the heart of a supermassive black hole. But this only works one way. You can't go back in time. But for now, you keep falling into the black hole. Beyond that, no one knows what'll happen to you. We only have theories about wormholes and white holes that might transfer you somewhere else in the universe. So enjoy your trip and just think about all the frequent flyer miles you're racking up. (laughs) Despite how much we already know about black holes, there are things that are still a mystery. For example, these space monsters seem to gain weight even when there's nothing for them to feed on. This realization might shed light on mysterious dark energy, but I'll talk about that a bit later. Most supermassive black holes lie in the centers of their home galaxies. You can probably say that they sit in the gravitational driver's seat. Meanwhile, hundreds of billions of stars, planets, and moons orbit them. Even though black holes are really, really big, physics makes it almost impossible for them to grow. But we've found one of these space wonders that has swollen to really unimaginable proportions. The black hole I'm talking about is Ton 618, and it's a mind-boggling 66 billion solar masses. The thing is so massive that astronomers had to think of a new term to describe it. They came up with an ultra-massive black hole. Imagine gathering all the stars in our home Milky Way galaxy and squishing the matter they're made of into one black hole. And it still won't be enough to create a ton 618. So the question is, how did this ultramassive black hole turn into such a behemoth? You probably know that black holes are made of matter packed together as densely as possible, to the point where gravity gets so powerful that not even light can escape it. And still, it doesn't mean that black holes are some kind of space predator roaming galaxies and munching on everything they come across. Ton 618 still has a whole galaxy filled with stars and other stuff happily orbiting it without getting pulled inside. What I want to say is that the perception of black holes as giant vacuum cleaners is wrong. In reality, it's incredibly hard to grow a black hole. Try to do it and you'll see. First of all, the material needs to get close enough to be affected by the black hole's gravity. 
And that's not so easy, considering how vast the universe is and how relatively small in size black holes are. But if something does get close enough, there's no escape. That's true. The force of gravity around the black hole increases dramatically fast. It even creates the effect of spaghettification. When an object gets stretched into thin strands of space pasta due to the influence of gravity. Once spaghettified, the matter then gets pulled into the black hole's orbit and flattened into a swirling and glowing disk of material. Eventually, this matter settles into a nice orbit around the black hole, quite far away from the point of no return, also known as the event horizon. By the way, we can use the event horizon to estimate the size of a black hole. The larger it is, the more massive the black hole you've come across is. Interestingly, getting the matter to cross the event horizon will be the most difficult part if you decide to grow yourself a black hole. You'll need to push the material out of its stable orbit around the black hole and make it fall in. As an example, we can take the Sun and Earth. Despite the star's enormous gravity, our planet doesn't get pulled toward it. And the main reason why the material can cross the event horizon is collision between particles. This way, they gain some energy, which is enough to send them spiraling into the black hole. But what happens afterward? The center of the black hole likely collapses into something called a singularity. That's infinitely dense material crammed into an infinitely tiny point in space. But the main problem here is that singularities are mathematically impossible. That's why some scientists suggest that when this weird stuff happens inside the black hole, its mass gets linked to the expansion of the entire universe. Yep, when it gets weird in space, it gets really weird. Such a coupled black hole is like a rubber band being stretched along with the universe as it expands. And as it stretches, its energy increases. And since mass and energy are proportional, the mass of the black hole increases too. But this new mass creates a pressure that makes the universe expand even more. That's the reason why the universe is expanding faster and faster all the time. But several scientists have suggested that, instead of a singularity, there might be something very different in the heart of the black hole – vacuum energy, which is one form of dark energy. Okay, but what is this dark energy? Everything on Earth and everything people have managed to see in space with the help of telescopes and other instruments is normal matter. It's made up of atoms and molecules and adds up to less than 5% of the universe. Around 27% of the universe is dark matter, and almost three-fourths of the universe is dark energy. Astronomers wouldn't even know the thing existed if, several decades ago, they hadn't found out that the expansion of the universe wasn't slowing down. Quite the opposite, it was accelerating. It meant there had to be some enigmatic force counteracting gravity, and it got dubbed dark energy. The European Space Agency's Planck satellite helped astronomers calculate how much dark energy the universe has to contain to explain the way its expansion is constantly speeding up. Scientists have also built models of how many giant stars formed and collapsed into black holes since the beginning of the universe. The conclusion is very exciting. The vacuum energy in these black holes is almost the same as the amount of dark energy that should exist in the universe. The scientists who conducted these experiments don't claim to have found the answer to the mystery of dark energy or to what we could see inside a black hole. But still, their theory is quite plausible. It can be tested with modern computer simulations and new data received from cutting-edge telescopes and other equipment. And now, let's speak a bit about dark matter. <laughs> what it is and what it consists of. Actually, this is another thing that confuses scientists to no end. If dark energy is a force responsible for the expansion of the universe, dark matter is supposed to explain how objects work together. Potential candidates for dark matter vary from strange particles to super dim objects. But even though astronomers can't grasp what exactly dark matter is, they know for sure what it isn't. It is dark, which means we can rule out visible stars and planets. It also can't be dark clouds of normal matter, otherwise scientists would be able to detect it. Dark matter is not antimatter. Astronomers don't see unique gamma rays that appear when antimatter comes in contact with matter. 
and neither is dark matter gigantic galaxy-sized black holes. There's one theory, though, and it's linked with a hypothetical concept of primordial black holes. Scientists have never got any real proof of their existence, but they think these black holes might be insanely old and quite tiny, by black hole standards, that is. Astronomers believe they could appear several milliseconds after the Big Bang. At that time, stars and galaxies weren't born yet. It means primordial black holes probably witnessed the entire history of the universe. By now, the smallest primordial black holes would have most likely evaporated away. But the bigger ones might still be scattered out there in space. Interestingly, these holes might be so small exactly because they popped up right after the Big Bang. The longer it took a black hole to appear, the larger it was. The mass difference between older, smaller, and younger, bigger black holes is incredible. Compare the mass a thousand times greater than our Sun to that of a jelly bean. Yeah, you get it. So, there's this theory that primordial black holes could actually be dark matter. This idea remained unpopular for decades. But recently, scientists have realized there are many more black holes in the universe than they used to think. And it means the theory might actually work. And the vast and still hidden from us population of Big Bang black holes could not only make up, but be dark matter. After all, astronomers haven't discovered a single dark matter particle yet, even after decades of searching. At the same time, some scientists argue that dark matter can't be tons of multi-sized primordial black holes. They would collide far too often for this to work out. So, if you have a problem with all this stuff, just ask your nearest scientist, hey, what's the matter? If you somehow fell into a black hole, it might change your future and erase your past. Well, at least theoretically. Let's start with the real world we live in. Here on planet Earth, your past can definitely define your future. But imagine you're not on Earth, but somewhere out there in the endless universe, and you stumble upon a certain type of black hole. The one that a UC Berkeley mathematician found. Not to mix it with a regular black hole, let's call this type... What about a benign black hole, huh? So here's why you need a specific black hole. Thing is, you're highly unlikely to stay alive in a regular black hole. But according to some calculations made by a postdoctoral fellow, hints from UC Berkeley, this specific type of black holes we agree to call benign ones might expand at an accelerating rate. This is what makes it possible to survive the transition from our deterministic world to a black hole, which is not deterministic. Hmm. Let's imagine you survived that passage, and now you're moving towards the center of a benign black hole. It's impossible to picture what's inside. And if you, as a traveler, could actually get into a black hole, you'd never be able to communicate to the outer world what interesting things are hidden in it. But it's not what interests us for now. We need to know how to get rid of the past. Hence, the mathematician you already know studies non-rotating black holes that have an electric charge. The most important thing about them is that besides the event horizon, they also have the Cauchy horizon. And here's the point. The Cauchy horizon is the place where so-called determinism simply breaks down. This may sound too scientific, but let me explain it to you. The Cauchy horizon is the place where your past doesn't determine your future any longer. So, here's a mathematically proven and apparently working method of how to get rid of your past. All you need to do is get into space, find a specific black hole, make it to the center, and get to the Cauchy horizon. However, if it sounds too complicated, you can simply try not to make mistakes here on Earth. Yeah, ideas like, your past gets cancelled, you have an infinite amount of options of how your future will evolve. And all that jazz sounds as unrealistic as they are appealing. Like, imagine no one knows you failed to get into college and get a degree, but from now on, you have every opportunity to do whatever you want but only theoretically. In reality, once you get into the black hole, not that specific one we've already talked about, you're most likely to disappear once and for all. But hey, don't be sad. I'm only talking about your current physical form. It's a bit deeper than it might seem. Thing is, 
there is a curious principle of quantum mechanics that can be explained in a simple way. For starters, imagine that you're not a human being, but just information. You have your experience, your background, and your thoughts. All of these are the information you are. Now, let's make it even simpler. Imagine a USB drive or a book. Both of these things contain information. If you smash a USB drive that contains music and movies, it won't exist anymore in its physical form. But the information it had will never stop existing. Same with the book. If you burn it, the information it has doesn't get burned. It continues to exist, but in another form. So, this fun theory claims that even though someone passes the horizon of events, which is a point of no return before you get spaghettified, they don't stop existing. In simple words, these universe travelers still exist, but in the form of information. Now, let's go back to the black holes. According to Stephen Hawking, black holes emit radiation. Radiation makes them shrink, and with time, I mean much time, a black hole can shrink so much that it eventually disappears. So what happens to the astronaut who got entangled in a black hole if it disappears? Nope, they won't be ejected from the black hole in the way they used to exist. However, they will still be ejected from there, but in the form of parking radiation. But it's just a theory. Right, you remember that no one knows exactly what happens in the black hole? Another theory says that what happens in the black hole doesn't really stay in the black hole. Sounds like a good alternative to Las Vegas if all the flights for the weekends have been booked. Some scientists believe that a black hole might have a portal where you can turn back time. According to this theory, there's a white hole at the end of a black hole. If you get there, you can undo things. Like you broke your mom's favorite vase? Hop into the white hole and it'll be as good as new there. You cooked a scramble and made a fresh orange juice, but somehow lost your appetite. It's not a problem if you cook it inside a white hole. Voila! The eggs are unbroken. The oranges are uncut and juicy again. No more food waste. All right, turning back time sounds really cool. So I guess we might actually need a black hole to help us out. If a black hole was made in a, let's say, lab, it could devour things until it grew big enough to consume the entire planet. First, it would munch on the Large Hadron Collider, which might possibly create something similar to a black hole here on Earth. Next, Geneva, where the Large Hadron Collider is located. Then the whole country of Switzerland, then Europe. At that point, it wouldn't be long before the Earth was gone too. Luckily, if a black hole did appear, it would be so small that it wouldn't be able to do anything. Black holes actually produce a lot of energy and release it, often as heat, like a furnace. That means they will fade away when they run out of fuel. Even if a stable microscopic black hole was created, it would grow so slowly that nothing would happen. Assuming that it survived long enough to absorb the tiny particles around it, a black hole of this size would take super long to get even a pound of weight. I won't be around then, but a black hole on Earth could be a great thing. Even a relatively small one may emit enough energy to completely power humanity. We're talking a lot about food, huh? Let's not forget about spaghettification. The concept is quite simple, by the way. It's all about gravity. Imagine you're playing with chewing gum. With your force, you could easily stretch it so instead of a regular piece, you can get a long and thin one. The same happens to you black hole force is enough to stretch you as if you were a piece of chewing gum. Gravity holds you tight on one side, which makes you stretch. You may wonder, how come you don't get spaghettified on Earth if there's gravity too? Easy peasy, it's just too weak to do that with you. If you asked a butterfly to stretch the gum, would it be able to do that? Not likely, their tiny limbs are just too weak. Same here, the Earth is just too weak compared to a black hole. So, if you are wondering whether you'll ever reach 6 foot 6, it may never happen on Earth. But once you're in a black hole, you can go far beyond those mere 6 foot 6 inches. Your best height moment won't last long though. If you stretch the chewing gum at one moment, it will simply tear apart. The same will happen to you because of spaghettification.
So, you're going on a journey to a black hole. Well, you'll need a lot of provisions, because the nearest black hole is 1,011 light-years away. This black pearl was found in the solar system called HR 6819. It was hidden in orbit with two other stars, which you can see with the human eye. Scientists have been studying this system since the 80s, but this winter, it revealed its main secret. This particular black hole is considered relatively small. But despite this, its mass is four times bigger than our Sun, and it's 2,500 light-years closer to Earth than the next nearest black hole. Eh, but don't worry. For people, the distance of 1,000 light-years is unreachable. For example, if we were to make a model where the Earth's distance to the Sun was only 0.05 inches, you would have to travel about 4 miles to get to this black hole. But our galaxy, the Milky Way, is about 100,000 light-years wide. So the distance of 1,011 light-years doesn't seem that long in comparison. But before you jump inside this black giant, let me try to discourage you. A black hole is a place in space-time where nothing can leave its orbit. No particles, electromagnetic radiation, or even photons of light can escape from a black hole. So you should understand that a journey to such a dangerous object as a black hole is a one-way ticket. And the way black holes are born is incredible. When a star runs out of fuel, the star collapses under its own weight and becomes a black hole, like the supermassive black hole in the Messier 87 galaxy. Its mass is 7 billion times bigger than the Sun, and it was discovered by the Event Horizon Telescope in April 2019. Okay, good. I see you've already bought a ticket for a faster-than-light spaceship. Since there's no refunds, and you don't want to lose the money, it's time to get ready for the trip. Oh, feel free to leave your luggage at home. 3, 2, 1, off you go! You're leaving Earth's orbit, saying goodbye to the moon, and don't forget to cheer up Pluto by saying it is big enough to be a planet. Then you pass the highway of dark space, and here's your stop, the black hole. Put on your suit, because you're going into outer space. The first thing you see is the event horizon. The gravitational field of a black hole bends the light around its edges, so the event horizon is like a croissant for the observer. Once you reach the event horizon, though, you won't be able to get back out. You may also notice that there's some kind of chaos in this ring. Some lights move in different directions. This happens because you get a mirror effect. But we still don't know what's inside the black hole. So you decide to send in a drone first. The gravity field of the black hole quickly draws in your metal buddy. As soon as he enters the event horizon, his body begins to change its shape. It becomes elongated like a strand of spaghetti. And the closer it gets to the center of the black hole, the longer it becomes. You also notice the drone has slowed its movement and now gradually approaches the black hole center. This is another effect of the space monster. The black hole's vast mass curves not only space, but also time. If you hang one watch next to a black hole and another on the wall in your bedroom, you will see that in the first watch, the second hand has barely moved, while a whole day has passed on Earth. And the more massive the black hole, the stronger the effect of slowing time. Theoretically, if you have a spaceship that can overcome the gravity of a black hole, you can fly to it and wait for a few seconds. During this time, your friends on Earth would live a whole life. Hmm, the flashlight on the head of your drone has turned red. This color change has happened for the same reason. The clocks that are deeper in a gravitational well tick slower when observed from outside. This also affects the photon's wavelength. We see red light because it has the longest wavelength of any color in the visible spectrum. All these things actually happen to the drone in a split second. But it seems slow to you because of the time war. Alright, it's time to enter the black hole yourself. The final preparation is your suit that will protect you from hawking radiation. This radiation is created by black holes due to quantum effects near the event horizon. Hawking radiation reduces the weight of the black hole. So if the black hole doesn't absorb more mass from nearby objects, it becomes smaller and then simply disappears. Oh yes, the black holes are also mortal. 
but Hawking radiation can turn you into ash, and you'd lose the chance to see the black hole from the inside. Okay, now let's do what you traveled 1,011 light years to do. One big jump, and you're caught in the gravity field of the black hole. This is the point of no return. But your distance allows you to set a stable orbit so that you can spin around the black hole like the moon around the Earth. A little higher, and you'll be thrown into infinity. A little lower, and you will be dragged into the black hole. So, theoretically, planets could exist at this distance. And even inhabited, if there were the necessary conditions. A couple of minutes later, and you are approaching the event horizon. Oh, look down. Your body is so long. You are now spaghetti yourself. Look around you. The stars are turning blue. This is called gravitational blue shift. As you fall into a black hole, its gravitational field pulls the photons of light down, giving them energy. Their wavelengths are getting shorter, so the red photons change into blue, and everything starts to look blue. Now you are right outside the event horizon, and the only thing you can see is a round blue beam of light above you. But soon, you will stop seeing even that. So, you've survived the strong gravitational field of a black hole, and the Hawking radiation didn't burn you to ash. You are now in the heart of the most mysterious object in the universe. You have front row seats, but the view is not that impressive. This is the darkest place you've ever been to. Even the usual laws of physics just stop working here. Theoretically, time goes by so slowly here that your home planet could no longer exist. And a new black hole could appear in place of our sun, but you will live exactly as long as there's enough oxygen in your suit. But what if this cosmic object is actually a wormhole that leads to another place in the universe? This is a popular theory, but scientists still can't confirm it. But if it is true, then after a while, you'll see a blue light again. Now you'll experience the same fall, only in reverse. Once you leave the singularity, which means the black hole's heart, you will be in the event horizon. The light from the stars gradually changes from blue to red. You can feel the shaking and warmth from the Hawking radiation. But then you're thrown into outer space, perhaps in some faraway galaxy. No one knows what will happen next. Are you in contact with an unknown life form? Or will the conditions there be intolerable for a human being? Or maybe you will not go to another place in space, but to a parallel universe. This theory also exists. According to it, black holes are portals to other dimensions. Simply put, there are endless copies of our universe. Every time you were faced with a choice, your twin from another universe chose something else. But let's leave that to fantastic movies. Right now, the journey into a black hole is merely impossible for humanity. We can't even reach the nearest one. But one day, we will learn more about these space objects' nature. And maybe this knowledge will push humanity forward and make us a multi-galactic civilization. Here's something cool that scientists have discovered recently. Schrodinger's black holes. Yep, the scariest objects in our universe turned out to be even more terrifying. Now, we know that they can also exist in many states at once. But what does it mean? Let's find out. Black holes are mysterious titans of our universe. Sometimes it feels like the more we learn about them, the less we know. We discovered them quite recently, in the 20th century. And since then, we've been finding various black holes all over the universe. Their sizes range from the size of a small town to horrifyingly unimaginable. But their most important feature is probably their huge mass. And that's where a recent study comes to play. Scientists have discovered that black holes have very unusual quantum properties. They found out that each black hole can be both large and small, light and heavy, no longer living and alive. Well, maybe except for the last part. Let's hope that there aren't actually any living black holes. That would be great. But the main point of the discovery is that each black hole can be in all possible states at the same time. It sounds weird, doesn't it? What is it actually supposed to mean? 
Well, the ability to be everything at the same time isn't a new concept in science. This is what physicists call a superposition, or to put it simply, a state of uncertainty. Quantum physicists discovered this first in tiny quantum particles. They noticed a very strange thing. As long as we don't observe a particle, it literally exists in all states at the same time. And only when we start interacting with it, for example, looking at it, measuring it, or just doing something, only then does the particle decide what state it should be in. Here's an example of this. Imagine that you have a ball in a box. You don't know what it looks like, and the thing is, as long as it stays in the box, the ball is all colors at the same time. Only when you take it out of the box does it finally choose one color. All this happens instantly, so you don't notice it. For you, the ball has always been blue. Sounds pretty scary, right? What? And it raises a lot of questions. For example, how do these particles understand that we're observing them? Hmm. How do they decide which state to be in? And what does our world really look like if we only see what is shown to us? Of course, this discovery caused a huge stir in the scientific community. No wonder, it does sound a bit unusual. That's what physicist Erwin Schrödinger also thought at the beginning of the 20th century. The ideas of quantum theories seemed delusional to him. That's why he decided to challenge them. He conducted a famous experiment. You've probably heard about it, even if you don't know anything about science at all. Yep, the infamous experiment with Schrodinger's cat. So, what was the point of the experiment? First of all, we have a box and a cat. In the box, there's a container with toxic gas and a special mechanism. Every hour, there's a 50% chance that this mechanism will either open the gas container or not. If it happens, the poisonous gas will be released and the poor cat won't make it. If this doesn't happen, the cat will remain alive and well. Don't worry, this was a purely hypothetical experiment. No cats were harmed in the process. But let's imagine that we did lock a cat in a box and waited for an hour. It's time to check the result. And here's where we get close to the most interesting part. How do you think this situation would end in our regular world? Well, probably within an hour, the container would either open or not. And that would be the moment sealing the cat's fate. After that, we'd just need to open the lid to find out the answer. But in quantum physics, everything is much stranger. According to it, until we open the box, the cat inside would be both alive and not alive at the same time. In other words, the universe itself doesn't know what to do with this cat. As if the poor animal is on the verge of two worlds inside the box. And when you open the lid, the universe will select a random result of the experiment. So why do we do all this to a poor kitty? Well, initially, Erwin Schrödinger wanted to show how stupid it all sounded. But then, he accidentally proved that quantum physicists were right. The situation turned out to be pretty funny. It went like this. Ha ha ha, these quantum physicists have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> According to their logic, the cat in my box should be both alive and not alive at the same time. Wait, hold on. Uh-oh, they're right. Schrodinger received the Nobel Prize in 1933, even though it wasn't for this discovery. And in 2022, three more scientists received the Nobel Prize for another discovery in this field. Thank you. These scientists were Alan Aspect, John F. Clauser, and Anton Zeilinger. They got it for their experiments that involved entangled quantum states. What does all this tell us? guess now we'll have to look for explanations in some kind of quantum mechanical magic. Unfortunately, humanity isn't developed well enough to test any of these theories, yet. But we have many cool assumptions. For example, the theory of parallel universes is one of the attempts to explain this phenomenon. Remember that ball in the box? Basically, according to the theory of the multiverse, there is an infinite number of different realities. So, if you don't know what the ball looks like, it kind of exists in this interdimensional, uncertain state. But when you open the box and look at the ball, you get transported to a random reality. For example, to the one where it's blue. It sounds pretty incredible, 
but still excited. Alright, but why do we need all this info now? Why is it connected to the recent discovery? You see, scientists thought, if teeny tiny particles in our universe behave like this, then what about some giant space objects? And so, they decided to direct their devices not into the microcosm, but into distant space. American and Israeli theoretical physicist Jacob Bakenstein was the first to suggest that black holes may have the same weird properties, but this theory had to be tested. The research itself was aimed at finding a connection between quantum particles and black holes. The researchers created a computer structure in which they placed a simulated quantum particle directly outside a giant simulated black hole. And in the end, this analysis showed that, yep, black holes could also exist in several states at once. For example, they can be incredibly massive and at the same time have no mass at all. And each of these mysterious space gates can have several masses at the same time. The modeling showed that these superimposed masses were, in fact, in certain determined bands or ratios, as predicted by Bakenstein, said the physicist Magdalena Zeich, referring to the study. It's not really clear yet what it all means, and this discovery alone hasn't brought us much closer to understanding how our universe works or what happens inside black holes. We have realized only one thing. Everything around us is much more complicated and more fantastic than we think. Who knows, maybe black holes are portals between these parallel universes. At this stage, it's impossible to disprove this. In other words, the universe has once again shown us that it is stranger and more mysterious and fascinating than we could imagine. Let's hope that in the future, we'll be able to understand at least a bit of what's going on in it. We all know about black holes, but what about their mysterious twin siblings, white holes? Have you ever even heard about these guys? Do they even exist? And the most important question of them all, are these two actually a big interdimensional portal? Let's find out. A black hole is a creepy space object with an incredibly strong attractive force. Its gravitation is so great that even light cannot escape from it. That's why it seems black to us. They appear when stars at least three times bigger than our sun completely burn out. Turning old, such a star begins to shed layers of gas and decrease in size. Its core shrinks and shrinks until it turns into a small ball with huge pressure inside. And when it can't withstand this pressure anymore, it goes boom, collapsing on itself and becoming a black hole. And yeah, we still have a lot to learn about these guys, but at least we have some rough idea about them. But what about white holes? Why do we hear about them so rarely? And why don't we know anything about them? White holes are theoretical space objects that are basically the opposites of black holes. If black holes eat everything they see, then white holes, on the contrary, don't let anything enter them. By the way, white holes is just a name. To us, they wouldn't actually look white. Imagine traveling in a spaceship. Suddenly, you see something that looks like a typical black hole. It's surrounded by a bright, rotating, massive ring of space dust and gas. But if you continue to watch, you'll see something unusual. This hole will spit out some matter from its center. Something like this is impossible with black holes. Only at this moment will you realize that this is a white hole, because visually, they have no difference. Both of these space phenomena have the so-called event horizon, which is something like a boundary. For a black hole, this boundary becomes the point of no return. If you cross it, there's no way back for you. But for a white hole, it's more like an invisible wall you can't get through. It's like an exclusive club for no one. Here's something interesting to think about. Once, a white hole got a huge amount of material from somewhere, somehow. But then, it stopped absorbing this material and started spitting it out. So that means that it spits out remnants of the past. But what exactly is this past? 
Can a white hole spit out something that once existed and has long disappeared? Can these things somehow affect our world? This thought may be a little worrying, but you can relax. The thing is, we haven't discovered even a single white hole yet. It may be because we have very little actual knowledge about space. In the 20th century, Albert Einstein and his general theory of relativity hit physics like a tsunami. He discovered something incredible, that gravity, as an invisible almighty force, is able to bend space and time. This discovery was a real breakthrough. That's when scientists first suggested the existence of black holes. But it took them more than 40 years to understand these space objects, or even prove their existence. Only recently did we receive the first photo of a black hole located in the center of the galaxy M87. You might remember that one. Many people laughed at the fact that it was too blurry, but we really should give scientists more credit. This photo was obtained through international collaboration of space stations and eight ground-based telescopes. So basically, we needed a huge amount of effort and resources to get even small proof of the existence of black holes. No wonder we still haven't discovered their twins. But on the other hand, many scientists now think that white holes may not even exist. For a long time, they were a logical conclusion of the theory of relativity. If black holes exist, why shouldn't white holes appear in the universe? But recently, scientists have begun to question if white holes are even possible. We know how black holes are born, but for a white hole to appear, this whole process needs to be reversed, which doesn't make a lot of sense. We can take an egg and turn it into an omelet, but how do we turn an omelet back into a whole egg? That's not only about food. At first, everything in the universe has some clear, definite shape. And then, over time, it becomes more and more chaotic. This is one of the universe's statistical laws. Moreover, it seems like white holes wouldn't be able to exist for a long time. They would throw a lot of their mass and material into space. All this would gather and gather around them, until, eventually, a white hole would collapse and form another black hole. What a weird cycle. But this is what this process looks like if you use common sense. But we all know that the universe is way too cool for our small, simple brains. There are so many things in it that don't make any sense, but they still exist. Some physicists are trying to bring white holes back from scientific oblivion. Their main argument begins with the question, what happens with things that enter a black hole? They can't just disappear into nowhere. According to physics, no matter in the universe can simply turn into nothing. It never disappears, it just changes. So what happens inside a black hole? What happens to a black hole itself when its lifespan expires? And how is a white hole born? As you've probably guessed, these questions may all have one answer. The two holes must be interconnected, and they may even be some sort of portal. For this to be true, we need to violate the equations of general relativity. And we know that Einstein's theory has been considered inviolable for years. But here's a fun fact. We did finally challenge it in 2022. Three scientists got the Nobel Prize for proving that Einstein wasn't right about many things. And the universe is way more complicated than we thought. In other words, white holes can really exist. They may be kind of crazy and incomprehensible to us, but their existence is still possible. If they did, how would they work? Well, we have a few ideas. For example, some suggest that a white hole could be a child of a black hole. Over time, a black hole could grow old and become very small. Then, the processes taking place in it would cease to obey common sense. Pure quantum randomness would come into play. Yada yada, particles create some madness and chaos, and boom! A black hole turns into a white hole. Such a white hole would be the size of a tiny particle, and weigh about as much as a strand of human hair. It wouldn't have the incredible gravitational mass of its ancestor, but it would have its insides. In other words, this white hole would store everything that the black hole swallowed in its previous life. And sooner or later, it would start spitting this information out. 
If this theory is true, then one day, white holes may begin to dominate our entire universe. This could happen when all the stars burn out and all the black holes dry up. But that's in the most distant future you can imagine. We're talking about trillions of years in the future here. The universe may not even survive for so long. There's also another option. Maybe our entire universe is the creation of a white hole. Some physicists say that the Big Bang looks suspiciously like the potential behavior of a white hole. Both of them are very similar mathematically, and who knows, maybe they're right. In any case, there are tons of things in our universe we have no idea about. And maybe one day, we'll discover the secret of these twins. Let's just hope that they'll turn out to be some cool interdimensional portals. We're traveling a thousand light years from our planet to an unfamiliar system. Here, there are two bright stars orbiting close to each other. But there is one small but very massive thing here as well, a black hole. These objects are mysterious and dangerous. They're capable of swallowing our entire world in one second without even noticing it. Even more, they can tear apart a huge star like our sun. And it's these giants that usually lie at the centers of galaxies. They're so heavy that their gravity holds countless stars, planets, and stardust around them. They can weigh millions or even billions of times more than the sun. And now, you're back on the ground at a rocket launch pad on Earth. All you can think about is holding your breath and jumping into the heart of that black pearl. But you don't have to hold your breath because you'll be in a spacesuit, and the oxygen is included free of charge. Besides, you're not likely to ever make it to the black hole. A trip that far with the technology we have now would take tens of thousands of years. Back to your garage where you stashed your hyper rocket, which will take you to the black hole in seconds. And you're next to two stars in a black hole. First thing you notice is that the black holes aren't black. Its gravitational force pulls in not only objects, but even light itself. This makes the hole invisible. You can only see a bright ring around it. That's called the event horizon. It consists of twisted light, hot dust, plasma, and pieces of asteroids that are also trapped there. So the event horizon is the first obstacle to overcome. Okay, you put on your jetpack, open your rocket's door, and jump towards the black hole. The force of gravity begins to pull you quickly toward it. The spacesuit protects you from the enormous temperatures and levels of radiation on the event horizon. Conventional protective gear would hardly help you. So you thank your dad for stashing this super powerful protective suit in your garage as well. You begin to feel like your body's stretching unpleasantly. The problem is that gravity increases with every inch closer to the center of the black hole. And it's much stronger at your head than at your feet. Your body starts to stretch like spaghetti. That's why it's called spaghettification. No suit can protect you from that. And there isn't a single spaceship that can withstand that kind of strain. Well, this was a short video. Okay, let's rewind to the moment before the jump. You realize that to get to the heart of the black hole and survive, you don't need improved equipment, but another black hole. And it's the size and weight of it that matters here. Theoretically, you can survive falling into a supermassive black hole. It's all about the width of the black hole's event horizon. When a hole is small, about the weight of our sun, the event horizon is small too. And then its edge is remarkably close to the center of the abnormal gravitational force, which would make you spaghettified quickly and uh, brutally. But if the event horizon is wide, it's farther from the center of the gravitational force. Then the difference of gravity pressing on your head and feet will be non-existent. So if you have enough air in your spacesuit, you can survive such a journey. So you must pick a supermassive black hole. Hmm, let's see. One at the center of the Milky Way? No, there's too much hot plasma and debris around it. You need a completely isolated black hole for a jump like this. Somewhere in dark space where it hasn't had time to gather the debris of neighboring worlds around it. You quickly open your space map and find such a black hole. One faster than light trip and you've arrived. There it is! 
a huge dark nothing. There's only distorted light from distant stars and galaxies on its event horizon. To test your theory, you throw a mannequin into it. It approaches the black hole and then slows to a standstill. But it's just an illusion. The black hole is so heavy, it can warp both space and time. So to the observer, the dummy is frozen in the event horizon, but it has long since entered its heart. The dummy didn't get spaghettified like you did when you fell into a small black hole. So now you're confidently jumping after it. Remember that even if you feel fine, it's still a one-way trip. Once in the black hole's field of attraction, nothing can escape its embrace. No matter how powerful a rocket you have or how hard you flap your arm, you're now at the edge of the accretion disk. Every second here equals weeks or months on Earth. You're traveling through time. Our home planet may already have flying cars and skyscrapers several miles tall all over the place. But for you, it's only a couple of minutes. Whoa! All the light you see from the stars has turned red. That too is because of gravity. The light we see is waves, but the black hole stretches them out. The short wavelengths of blue become long and red. Great! You've passed the event horizon and are now heading into black nothingness. You look up and see a thin ray of light. The last thing you see, in fact. After that, there's just black void. No one knows what happens next. Some theories say black holes can be portals to another dimension or to another place in the universe. By jumping into a black hole in our galaxy, you can jump hundreds of thousands of light years away from our home. In that case, you will experience your fall in reverse. First, you see a small but expanding beam of light. Then, red starlight returns to blue. And before you know it, you're back on the event horizon. And soon after, you're free of the black hole's pool. But scientists still can't confirm this theory. Okay, that's too grim. So just this time, we'll bring you back to Earth in the company of your friends. They praise you for your accomplishment of surviving the center of a black hole. Now you're the heart of the company, and no black hole can scare you. But even the biggest black hole in space isn't as scary as you might think. They have a lifespan. That radiation I mentioned takes energy from the black hole. If it doesn't have food around it, the hole starts to deflate like a balloon. And eventually, there's nothing left. Another fear around black holes is that we can create one at home. Indeed, inside the Large Hadron Collider, scientists conduct experiments with small particles colliding at high speed. There are huge bursts of energy. And some scientists believe this energy is enough to create a microscopic black hole. It will begin to absorb its surroundings and grow. First, some small objects in the room where it was created. Then, the entire lab. The hole continues to grow and is already consuming our whole planet. It changes the balance of power in our solar system and absorbs the planets one by one. When those are finished, it's time for dessert. The sun! The light upper layers of plasma are stretched into long spaghetti and pulled toward the black hole. Then, layer by layer, our star collapses into the dark abyss. When the sun is half absorbed, the black hole shoots a beam of energy and light outwards and continues to consume the sun. In mere moments, there's nothing left of our solar system. That's how some people describe the end of the world. But even if we do manage to create a microscopic black hole, we'll be safe. It'll be too small to absorb big objects, and it will only feed on small atomic particles. Black holes emit energy as well as consume it, so our little one won't have time to grow. It'll lose more than it finds in a fraction of a second. So what you'll see is a momentary flash and then nothing. Although creating a stable and controlled black hole may even be useful, they emit enormous amounts of energy that we can use. A black hole the mass of Mount Everest could power all of humanity. Of course, black holes are still dangerous. But we can watch them and study our universe. If we stay far enough away, of course. So, you decide to put a padlock on that garage door. For now. <laughs>